Welcome back to the channel, everyone. So today I thought I would touch on the buzz that is AI and how it's probably going to affect us as photographers from really this point moving forward. Because these AI image generators have gotten so good that some of their outputs, or a lot of their outputs, are hard to distinguish between uh, photographs and then when you get into stuff like illustrations, it's it's basically, it's there. There are really two sides to that coin. One of them is super scary, how this stuff can, can take over a lot of what we do. The other side of that coin, I'm trying to be optimistic here, is where we can potentially use this as a tool. So for instance, if you've ever dreamed up a concept of uh, photographs and the prospect of the cost or time it would take to assemble a team and uh, put together this, this massive production, or it doesn't even have to be massive, but just to travel or, or do different things to, to bring these images together. This right now is a pretty good tool at doing that. So in just the 15 minutes before I started recording this, I put together uh, potential scenarios that I'll flip through real quick. Simply describing these scenes with words and what they call a prompt, I was able to output these images. And I will show the prompts I use to output exactly what you'll see on the screen here. I know there's some photographers that have started putting up AI images on their social feeds and they are unresponsive when people ask them questions about how they created these images. And uh, I've just really never subscribed to that line of thought of keeping everything a secret. So I'm gonna show you everything that I put into uh, Mid Journey 5 in this case to create these images. Uh, one of them, I mean, it's crazy to think that you could be on the, uh, the deck of a ship out in the middle of the ocean. Or another one I did was uh, a group of gangsters. So if you want to do a theme where you had uh, someone dressed up in, in that type of 1920s attire, you could build out a backdrop just for that. Another one's a rain-soaked street uh, in Tokyo, in Japan. Uh, you know, instead of having to fly over there and take pictures or pull something off a stock site, you can generate what you need right here. Uh, another one would be a super nice coastal scene with waves crashing and a lighthouse in the background uh, where you could take a picture of a model and, and drop them in that type of scene. Uh, another one which if you think about the uh, prospects for production is a ballroom full of people dressed to the nines in, in the midst of a dance. Or you can go uh, something simple like a path through a redwood forest which if you live where I live currently uh, we don't have access to uh, a redwood forest <laughs> around here. So, so this just opens up doors to your creativity, which we didn't have access to uh, before without using someone else's photos or, or just kind of grabbing what was out there or actually going out and doing it ourselves, which costs money and time and everything else. So like I said, I'm trying to, to, to view it on the positive end of things here. And so what I did is I took uh, one of my images from a recent photo shoot with the a baseball team, and I looked to generate a backdrop uh, in Mid Journey 5, which is what I've been using, and seeing how I could take the image from the photo shoot, composite it together with that backdrop to create some sort of a, a new image and use that as an end result instead of actually taking pictures of the stadium myself because sometimes we don't have access to uh, those types of backdrops when we work for certain clients. So this was a pretty convincing tool, I thought, and I'll take you through the whole process of how I got it done. All right, so for these first couple of minutes before we jump straight in, let me just, I guess, tell you about Midjourney. Uh, it's a app that is, or an application that is used through the Discord app. So what you'll have to do is go to Discord if you don't have an account, uh, just set up an account there, and then you'll have to go uh, to Midjourney, sign in there, and then you'll add that to your Discord, and then you'll be able to interact with Midjourney. Uh, I believe from the onset, they give you like 25, I believe, outputs uh, that you can do for free. So you can play around and kind of see what it'll do. And as I mentioned, it's the images are based off of text prompts that you put in to Midjourney via the Discord. And they are continually releasing versions that uh, get better and better as time goes on. I started playing around, I guess, in version four. We're now at version five and things have uh, really gotten um, impressive on here. 
All right, so I'm gonna start recording the screen here. And what you'll see is uh, this is mid-journey set up on uh, my Discord. Uh, and uh, you've got different rooms here where people are interacting with mid-journey. You can see other people's outputs here. Uh, and on top of that, you can see their prompts that they put in to achieve the certain output. So uh, it's a funny thing. You just kind of have to play with it a little bit to uh, figure out how things translate, uh, where you might um, structure your sentences, uh, and figure out what it's picking up uh, based off of where it is in the sentence. And there, as I mentioned earlier, there are plenty of guides on YouTube here to kind of help you along your way, and that's exactly kind of what uh, I've ended up doing. So within Discord, once you, so I've gotten a MidJourney account, and that allows me to kind of set up a private um, server and so that's what I've done here so I'm not in the mix with everybody else on the actual mid journey um, server and so what I've done is start is started my own over here and then I've invited the uh, mid journey bot into my server and so I can interact with it here without seeing a bunch of other people's work there it just makes it a lot easier to what to do so uh, <clears throat> when I started out um, trying to make this background uh, and you'll see, uh, based off the text prompts, it was it was giving me different images. Most of these started out with kind of like an overall image of a baseball field. And for my composite, I needed to have something down on the field, and that's kind of where I was struggling to get it to um, push out something that, that would work with my image. And as you can kind of see here, uh, what I put in, just a... Uh, detailed, lively scene. Some of this stuff is some stuff that I've seen other prompts uh, in within other prompts and have used them here. Uh, and so these first handful of prompts that I put in are just giving me these wide uh, stadium shots, which are not going to work for uh, the composite I want to do. And you can see I'm I'm continually changing some of uh, what I'm you know putting in here, trying to to get it to uh, bring it down a little bit. Uh, let's see here. Um, <clears throat> so right here I've got uh, as seen from home plate, hoping that you know we would move the camera down home plate and then see the stadium there. But it's still showing me uh, just the, the big stadium shots that you would take from the stands. Uh, and then here I've actually added in like a modern mirrorless camera and you can see that it interpreted that by actually adding a camera into some of the images here. So let me, I'll say too, with each um, prompt input, you will get four images here and then you interact with these four images uh, down here with these um, prompts here. So this is number one, you got two, three, and four. So if you want to upsize, which we'll do when we get to the image that I've selected, you can upsize any of the images here and then you can get variations of the images using these other buttons. So uh, finally, I got a, let's see, create a detailed view looking up from home plate of a baseball stadium, lights, nighttime, using a 24 millimeter lens with cinematic lighting. And I started to get some things here, but we're getting closer. Uh, you can, it's pretty neat abstracts here. It looks like I've got seats here and some of the uh, top of the stadium there. This almost looks like a spaceship coming in, <laughs> but still pretty cool. This one right here I thought had a little bit of uh, promise and I believe I upsized, yes, I upsized that one. So this is what happens when you hit the U4 and you'll get a solo image and that's what I got here. Still though, I'm, I'm a little bit positioned on the, along the wall or in the stands, the base of the stands, uh, but I, you know, I really like this, this stadium view uh, and that's just part of being creative with this program and the fun of it. So then what I did is I did uh, the variations of that, um, that image and I haven't had much luck with these. Uh, that you, if you look here, you can see there are certain changes, but I'm still based in the same spot, which is not gonna help me out. Uh, so and I just kind of jumped from the stadium to something else, just kind of see, uh, and this is basically like the path I showed at the beginning of the video, just learning as I'm going along. And so then I, I came back and I, uh, instead of a photo from home plate, I started saying a photo of home plate. <laughs> 
and you can see it, it was starting to do what I wanted it to do. So we're on the field level at least, but there's still a lot of like dirt, some, and I'm still getting half main stadium, uh, just your, your big stadium views. Um, and then I've got a side angle of home plate, knowing that my player is uh, photographed from the side. And so I'm, I'm trying to position the camera even more for these backgrounds. And I've got some stuff here that could probably work if I zoomed in. Uh, you know, just really kind of neat stuff. You can you can see it's doing some weird things with some of the dirt in the in the foreground. But I'm really liking the stadium uh, backdrops. Uh, we got some fans in this one, but we don't seem to have fans in these other two. Uh, and so what I ended up doing is putting a player in the image. And that was basically how I was able to get where I needed to go. And so once I put a player uh, right here, I've got a, a baseball player waiting for a pitch at home plate, uh, full body side angle, and a stadium full of fans uh, at night, and gave it a um, 24 millimeter lens so I get that wide kind of aspect. And then also con controlling the aspect ratio of the actual image with this number here going 16 by nine because I knew I needed a wide angle. So if you want to do like a portrait, uh, more of a portrait uh, sample, you would flip that around um, and go like four by five, or um, if you're doing like a story or something on Instagram, it'd be like nine, nine by 16. Uh, so you can set those parameters in here and uh, it'll apply those to the output. So, you know, pretty cool stuff. But so I, I played around with this with different prompts uh, using a player, outputting a player. And this is another thing that kind of occurred to me while I was doing this is, and this would, could potentially be a, a, a really cool tool to um, output mood boards for upcoming photo shoots. Uh, just looking at some of these images, it'd be really, uh, I'd, I would like to kind of recreate some of these actually using some of my images. Uh, just because of the angles are so cool in relation to the background. So it's something that maybe you can play around in here, uh, print some out, take with you, and then try to recreate some of that uh, on your photo sets. And then you could come back and uh, drop them into these images. Just another angle, something else to think about. Uh, and here I started getting uh, more of the full body of some of these guys. Um, it might be the actual... I changed the angle, let's see, upward. So that I think this is actually the same prompt and just re-putting it in and seeing uh, what else I'm gonna, I'm getting out of the um, Mid Journey app here. But I'm getting super close on these as I'm moving along. And then I got to this one right here, which is what I ended up using. So um, I saw that, I liked kind of where he is in relation to what's going on on the field. The background's really cool. You got some banners up here. Uh, Mid Journey doesn't do well with uh, letters and stuff just yet, but it's gonna be out of focus, so that's not gonna bother me. Uh, also, I know my player is on the left side of the frame, so I would have to flip this anyway. Uh, and then, so what I did is I upsized uh, that image right here. And that's where I ended up. Um, within Mid Journey for this image. So what I did then was uh, drag this over into Photoshop. Let's jump over there. Here is the base image. This is the image uh, that I'm wanting to use. So this was kind of in my head as I was looking through and outputting in those images in Mid Journey, trying to get that backdrop that I was wanting. And let me jump here to the composited image. So. If we look back, let's go back to <clears throat> let's go back to Mid Journey. So you can see here, uh, he's cut off mid calf or so, and so then, and also the angle's a little bit off for my camera um, from my photo shoot, and it's a lot easier uh, if you don't include <laughs> uh, feet in a composite for any of us who that have composited. That just brings a whole another element in, and uh, so. From the onset, I knew that I was gonna come in and crop, so that's what I did uh, to kind of get this rolling. Um, brought in a crop, which is very similar to what the image, um, based off of the crop that's on the image coming out of Mid Journey. All right, so I got my image, and then this is what happens when I drag the Mid Journey <laughs> image in. And this is obviously, here's a full res image out of my camera, and uh, the mid journey is a lot smaller. So 
Once again, I'm going to turn to AI within Photoshop and help let it help me um, get this image where I need it to be. So what I did is open up the neural filters, really neat tools that they keep developing within Photoshop. I think, and Photoshop's also got their own uh, image generator coming out, I believe it's called Firefly. And who knows, within a couple years, uh, we might just have a base image here and have Adobe create these backdrops just based off of our image. Uh, I kind of feel like that's kind of where it's going, which then again takes the skill out of our hands and makes things a lot easier. And that's a whole nother, another story. But anyway, let me get, let me show you what I did here. So I've got this uh, image or this layer and there's something here called super zoom. And what you would do is you, you make sure you're on that layer and then super zoom is going to uh, blow up that, increase the image or the size of that image. You can do it up to four times. Uh, that's at one time there. You can click this here uh, three more times and it'll, it'll do a max uh, super zoom. And I'm not gonna do it right now because it takes like 20 minutes to do and I don't want y'all to be here for an hour waiting for this to happen. So that, that's exactly what it did. Let's look at the output. You can set here, output and new layer, new document. I did new layer. I canceled that. And so this is what it gave me. So it went from that to this and I've flipped it already. Um, but you can, you know, the detail and everything is still in that image for the most part. And we're using these, let's not forget, we're using these as a backdrop. So I'm not too concerned about any of this detail back here. Uh, and it's already a little bit blurred based off of how I'm prompted it, how I prompted it out of mid journey. And that's kind of what makes it so great from the start. There are a couple of funny things going on here. I mean, you, the, there's no wall here separating the fans and the field. So with, when I get this positioned in uh, with my composite, I'm going to have to uh, probably do some, bring this crop up a little bit to cover up that aspect. That It looks like the fans are just standing on the field. It almost looks like they're on the sideline at a football game. All right, so we've got this image here uh, where we want it. And what we're gonna have to do is, you know, is upsize it even more. And this is kind of where I've positioned, let's get on that layer. So you can kind of see that I've, I've, and I've cropped this already. You can kind of see where I've positioned the, where I just mentioned the fans at the, at the bottom where you can't really tell that there's not a wall there. And so from here, what I need to do is extract my player. And there are multiple ways you can do this. You can do this with the healing brush and actually Photoshop. And the beta has got a object removal tool, a new one that probably coming out in one of the next versions, does an amazing job and would probably be perfect for this. But for right now, uh, what I did is uh, just kind of grab my lasso tool, went around my player here. I'm doing this obviously on a laptop really quick. And then I did, just went in here to uh, edit and then down here to content aware fill and let it do uh, the work there. And that is a tool within Photoshop where it takes the surrounding areas and then applies that and erases our guy out. I'm going to show you exactly what it did. And so it outputted to this layer right here. Uh, you can see there's a little bit of funkiness going on with these uh, levels of the stadium. So I just grabbed uh, my uh, clone stamp tool and helped those out a little bit. Uh, the beauty of it is we're going to be putting our player in there, so he's going to cover up most of this. And so you're not going to really see that. All right, so you know this is where that player is, and then this is kind of where I'm lining up uh, for the composite. So I'm essentially sticking him almost in the same spot and using uh, my player that I'm coming in to cover up some of this area that, that we've uh, replaced in Photoshop. But right there, you can kind of tell or you can kind of see that it'd be hard for anyone to tell that there was ever a player there. And so now that I've, I've dropped him in, there's still, it's still not uh, exactly where I want it. You can see the color on him is a little bit off. And so there's another neural filter uh, that we will use to fix that in this type of instance. And that is underneath the harmonization right here. And so what you would do is select uh, the layer that you want to harmonize with uh, the other layer you would select, uh, which would be the background layer. And so then that goes in, 
let me show you here and be easier there. So this is what the Harmonize did. It changed the colors of the uh, the whites for me, uh, changed um, some of the contrast on my player, kind of even that a little bit out because we've got some haze here, which kind of evens that um, to a certain extent. And so I think it did a really, really neat job. You can obviously adjust the opacity. You can do it within the neural filter and you can do it here. If you want to adjust that to kind of maybe bring him forward just a touch, maybe we'll put him at 90%. Another thing I like to do, gives me a little more control, is, is do a color fill layer. And then on top of that, so what I did is grab some of this color up here in the lights, um, filled this layer here. And then on top of that, I can do a hue saturation, which is uh, clipped to that uh, layer. And I can just go right here onto the hue slider and I'm changing everything within the scene color wise. And so I believe I had it kind of in this little area here and kind of gives it a little bit of a cinematic feel. Another trick you can do is, is add some little bit of noise. And that's what this layer is doing. That kind of helps uh, sell the fact that this is a singular image and taken at one time. And so in here's the final output right here. So I think it's pretty cool. This is the uh, first time that I've, I've actually done this using uh, something like Mid Journey to create a backdrop and then taking one of my photographs and placing it in. Uh, I think it sells the effect and I was really found it cool enough to come on here and make a video uh, talking about this tool. Um, like I said earlier, it's a lot of scary aspects of what's going on <laughs> with AI and, and I will probably make another video um, kind of talking about those aspects. But anyway, I hope that y'all found this uh, really neat, interesting. Uh, if you feel like it's worthy, please give it that thumbs up. Uh, if you wanna see more content just like this in the future, hit that subscribe button down there and the little notification bell. Uh, you can also, in the meantime, catch me on social media at Quants Photo on Instagram and Twitter. If you got any questions, comments, anything like that, drop those down below as well. And I will see y'all soon in the next one.